students. Happy Wednesday. We are excited to have another week of our live YouTube services. What week uh, is it? And it's Tucker. <laughs> what week? Listen, I'd like to, I'm, I'm going to, I'm, I'm going to start. I'm going to brag. I know that you're not going to do that, but I was okay, technically, hey, stay humble, stay humble, right? I was technically quarantined a week early before everybody else, because remember I had that nasty cough and Shannon yeah. and Joe Bradley told me I wasn't allowed to come into the office for a week. And then we went on quarantine. So I'm, I've been on quarantine for an extra week. So I'm not even, I uh, mean, so i'm dying inside I stay people. humble stay humble dude so, are, I, are you having a good wednesday yeah it's pretty good wednesday i had my popcorn and ice cream i think that's my day that's my wednesday weekly thing and i think my blood sugar is gonna go through the roof because i got movie theater butter this time and your boys go into town like it's it's, right, not, it's not good it's not good we're gonna start <laughs> we're gonna start service we're gonna interact in the chat and so here's our first interaction Tucker has lost weight in this quarantine. I know. How many, pounds, how many pounds do you think Tucker has lost in quarantine? So okay, let, let me. Below. Yes, please. Because here's the thing: I'm still working out. Like my workouts have changed. It's been much more high intensity stuff. So, although I'm eating ice cream and popcorn for lunch, I'm still losing weight. So I'm still going good. So you did that before quarantine, so I don't blame it on quarantine, but. Tucker, last week we had Mr. Alex Seek and Clara uh, jump on. And so this week we have two new student guests. This is something we're going to be doing every week while we're in quarantine. I think something we should bring up, even when we're not, it's good having students participate in service and meeting. And so uh, this week we have two students with us. They are a brother-sister duo. We have Isaac Tate and Isabel Tate. So say hello to them. Oh, my gosh. He had his eight years. So. <laughs> Uh, they're right there so we asked them to come on and what they're going to do is we want as 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 pastors we want students to encourage other students to kind of speak from the heart in this time and give a word of encouragement and so that is exactly what Isaac and Isabel are going to do so we're going to ask Miss Isabel as a lady to go first um hi guys I just wanted to share a quick verse with you kind of like Clara did last week it's Psalm 119.50, and it says, My comfort in my suffering is this, your promise preserves my life. Mm -hmm. So kind of with that, it kind of relates to our situation because we're suffering, but we can trust God and know that he knows what's up ahead, and he preserves our life. Awesome, Isabel. Thank you for sharing that. Um, so if the next dynamic duo part of the Tate pair, Isaac Tate, take it away, dude. All right, so uh, I've been sharing this passage um, at a lot of places. Uh, I've been doing it for uh, my podcast this week, and I did it for, uh, we did a midnight service, me and Austin did last night, and so I'm just going to share that passage again. It's Saul, uh, not Saul, Philippians 4, verses uh, 4 through 7, and it says, Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again, rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. And the God of peace, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. So I think it's just real important during this time, like, to remember to not be worried about anything and not be anxious and just remember that uh, God can give us a peace that passes all understanding. So, yeah, that's mm -hmm. what I have. Awesome, dude. Great job. Uh, last night was pretty cool. Um, men, we did a, we know we have on Mondays, Tucker, we've been doing the live prayer at 8 yeah. p.m. Um, mm -hmm. Austin Faulkner, shout out to Austin if he's watching, but he said he wanted to do a midnight thing because students are up at midnight. I am not no. up at midnight. <laughs> no, I'm an old man. I go to bed at like 9 or 9.30. And so um, I straight up, I went to bed, set an alarm, woke up, watched the live, and then went back to bed. But Isaac and Austin did a fantastic job. And so we want to say thank you guys for um, jumping on. Thank you for showing an encouragement. And uh, we'll give a little shout out to Bremen, right? Is that where you guys go to school? Bremen. Say Bremen. <laughs> Bremen. That's what, every time I put it in maps, that's what Siri calls it. I've headed to Bremen. And so uh, seriously, they're awesome students from Bremen. Um, it's cool to see what God is doing in you guys and also in your family. And so thank you guys for being on it. Thank you guys for being the leaders that you are. Yep. Yeah, Isaac, can you um, could you pray for the night before we get started? Yep. 
Let's pray. God, I thank you for today. Uh, I thank you for the opportunity we have and the technology you've given us to, to be able to uh, share a service with our students and leaders. God, I thank you for uh, things like the chat and stuff where we can still interact, um, even though we're not physically together. Uh, God, I pray that you'll just continue to uh, keep us safe and keep us healthy from this virus and just continue to remind us that you give us a peace that passes all understanding when we're um, and just remind us not to worry or be anxious, but to go to you in prayer uh, and make requests to you, God. Um, I pray for the students tonight that they will tune in and listen to what Trey and Tucker have to say, God. I pray that you'll uh, just allow us to really focus on what they're saying tonight. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you again, Isaac and Isabel. Y'all give it up for Isaac and Isabel in the chat. Tell them thank you. They're going to be joining us in the service now. So Trey, we are actually yeah. we're actually going to do something we haven't done before on live stream. Drum roll, please. Mixing it up, and that's play a game. Yeah. We're we're playing a game, dude. So I know us junior hires, we love to play games, and hey, I know the high schoolers like to play this game too. So the game is called. Head, shoulders, knees, and cups. Trey, have you ever heard of this game before? I have, and um, huge fan. It is a classic. If you've never played, I would say you may or may not be a Christian, but I mean, I just, we're not going to go that far. Anyway. anyway, it is a good game. Tucker, explain how we play. Absolutely. So those at home, um, this is how you play head, shoulders, knees, and cups. So you need to get a cup, a cup that you're willing to break, possibly. Maybe a, a very sturdy cup, a solo cup, a plastic cup, whatever it is. But what you're going to do is you're going to have an opponent. Maybe it's your sibling, maybe it's your parent or somebody, but you're going to put the cup in between you guys. So here's you, the cup's in between you guys, and you're going to listen to my voice yell out which part of your body you should be touching. So it goes head, shoulders, nose, because you can't see my knees, nose, ears, eyes. And when I say cup, you go and you try to grab that cup as fast as you can. So I'm going to let you all get your opponent and the cup. I'm going to give you all a couple seconds. So um, just y'all do that. Me and Trey will banter. I know we have a couple of, um, I'm looking at the chat. I know we've got a couple brother-sister combos watching. Oh, yes. Obviously, we have Isaac and Isabel. They can go up against each other. Um, I'm pretty sure I saw the Keelers in oh, here. Keelers. So, uh, Battle of the Keelers. Um, what other brother-sister combo? I think Sam and Sam is like working behind the scenes and Meredith are together. They're both leaders. And so they could, mm -hmm. you know, they could play. But Sam's also the guy behind the screen. So don't screw it up, Sam, okay? Yeah. Uh, what else? And... Um, Trey, your There's, haircut looks nice. Oh, thank you. My wife cut it. I was very oh. nervous. And so, <laughs> yeah, so she left uh she left me I left her three and a half stars on Yelp. So that's Maddie. Nobody will play with you. You get Christy and you get Kevin into this room right now and you let them hear our voices. Yeah, tell CC I'm coming for her. Okay. So okay, so I, right. I think that's enough time. You oh, ready here? Okay, let's see it. The Keelers are ready. Okay. <laughs> Wait. Tell Katrina to play against Larissa. Katrina, play against Larissa or your sister Margarita. Come on, dude. Oh, yeah, actually, the, Katrina's really aggressive, so I wouldn't play against her. Uh, fun fact. I, Katrina, I think you'll appreciate this. I was going to the grocery store for essential travel, and I'm pretty sure I locked eyes with Margarita Carmona, and she looked at me and was like, why are you looking at me? So, uh, <laughs> okay, everybody ready to play head, shoulders, knees, and cups? What's going to happen is there's going to be a countdown on the, on, for one minute, and whoever has the most uh, cups grabbed, so the highest score between you after one minute, is victorious and you in the chat just blow up brag about yourself do the humble brags like oh i won 17 times so everybody ready awesome okay here we go get in position head shoulders knees toes shoulders head knees head knees eyes cup oh, okay let's see wait they can't see us right so no, if my, they, I do the motions 
They Wait. can't see it. They can only hear us. Sam, is the countdown on? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, we got, we got, we got to keep going. Okay, next round. Ready? Shoulders, knees, toes, knees, toes, shoulders. Oh, I'm stumbling over my words. Cup. Ah! Okay, everybody, reset. Maybe it's one to one. Maybe it's two to zero. If it's two to zero, the zero, you're a loser. Okay. Twenty seconds. Okay, ready? Head, shoulders, exactly. knees, shoulders, works. head, cup. All right, reset, reset. We got to go quick. Shoulders, knees, toes, knees. Hurry, hurry, toes, hurry, hurry. Head, hurry. shoulder, cup. Ah! Okay, one last time. This is five. Okay, shoulders, cup. Ah! Okay. <sighs> I'm stressing out. <laughs> I heard that. I heard oh, that. there's like a little bell and everything. That's so cool. So bougie. Who is potato one in the chat? Potato one. That's who I want to know. Why do I feel <laughs> what was I said, about to say? I think it's Logan uh, Moore. Potato two, Logan Moore. You got. Let's see. I am just curious to see who all's winning. Oh, I think. Oh, it's back on us. So we got a couple people who went two for zero. Because Maddie Jones said she won them all. Yeah. Tucker, you stress me out. Oh, okay, Elena. Oh, I know how you stress me out. Oh, Trey, I also got I also got I beat myself four times. Here you go. Trey. Okay. So I did you know, some Wow, Kevin. Go ahead. Kevin works, man. I thought I, my money would have been on Marissa, but hey, here uh, we are. Dude, Kevin, Kevin's scary when he gets uh competitive. No. So if you saw on the seven on my Instagram. Um, I did some 78 trivia. So there was 10 trivia questions, all multiple choice. And I wanted to see who would get it. So I actually, I broke it down into three sections, students, leaders, and staff members. Okay. So I, I sent the link to the staff and they voted on it. Trey, how many did you get right? Can you remind me how many you got right? I I got seven right. I thought there was a couple that I I was I was like literally one. It was all the numbers one. It was like how many small groups did we start with? I could have sworn it was two, but it was four. Like those kind of number ones. Uh, the number ones got me. So no so shame. Trey actually tied for second place. The highest uh, score was eighty percent, and that was by Keith Trollinger and Sam Bean on the staff side. On the seventy-eight leader wise. Probably the most competitive leader we have on our team got the most correct. Trey, who do you think it was? Most competitive? Yeah. There's a couple. I would have probably said Katrina would have been my first bet as competitive. Katrina, uh, Katrina did win. You're right. Katrina got the most yeah. right. She got seven out of 10. So all the 78 leaders, y'all got to give props to Katrina. Um, outside of like adult wives, my wife got all 10 right because she cares about me. She adores, she, she loves me, all that good Aww. stuff, right? <laughs> you know, she's so sweet. She's so supportive. Okay, don't listen to Isaac Tate either because I am doing this for 78 students. There was one 78 student who got all of them right. And that's pretty impressive because this student actually um, was not part of the 78 when the 78 started. Going 10 for 10 was Mr. Drew Johnson. Drew Johnson, uh, we promised some swag. What are you, Drew? Bah, 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 bah. Wait, oh gosh, I have the app. I have the app. Hold on. Oh gosh. Wait, tell me if you can hear this. <laughs> Congratulations, Drew slightly, Johnson. Slightly stressful. But 10 for 10, dude. Isaac Tate did get 10 for 10, but he's not a 78 student, so he didn't win. Um, Isabel, you didn't get to vote at all. So, so yeah, yeah. that's some of this craziness. Let's, let's bring the spirituality into the situation. <laughs> Jesus. So we're going to jump into our sermon in just a second and talk through our current series. But um, we've got a couple announcements for you. Um, just so you guys can stay up to date on all things 912, all things 78. Uh, Tucker, you got the first one, bro. Hopefully you, you got, no, I did not. It's reading plan. It's re it's the reading plan. 
So guys, check out, check out on the Instagrams of the 78912 and also on Facebook. We post it in the Southern Hills group. Follow along with our reading plan. It's been super awesome. It's been super enlightening and convicting for me. So, hey, continue to follow with the reading plan. We're fi- we finished up, James. We're going through the smaller letters of like First Peter, for, uh, First, Second Timothy. So super, super cool stuff. Yeah, it's uh, I've enjoyed it, and I think it makes it easy of just like of all of us being on the same thing, and then doing the hear journals and stuff like that. Really, really enjoy it. And so next, um, one of the things that we're doing while we're trying to build community is like I know we tried bingo, and we're doing the TikToks, and we're doing our lives, and we're doing the reading plan, and we're doing live groups via Zoom. We are doing um, our best to stay connected and to do all that we can to make sure that we are staying, I guess, yeah, I guess connected in front of you guys. And so one of the things that we've done in the past was led by a leader, Derek Vandiver. So Derek, if you're watching, shout out to Derek. He's a 912 leader. He's the man. Uh, Derek, if you guys remember a few weeks ago at the very end of our service, we asked that you guys comment in the chat and say somebody that you're praying for and why, or just kind of a prayer request or for a front line, maybe um, first responder or something like that. And so what Derek did is he actually took all those prayers and he turned it into an art project. And basically out of Canvas, he used all the prayers for stu- from students to make a cross. And then through the cross, he had a stethoscope of all of the names of all of the different people from Southern Hills that work in the uh, medical field. And so it was awesome to see uh, all of the names of you guys who prayed for uh, our first mm-hmm. responders and for doctors and for nurses, and also the names of all the people that are needing prayer in our church. So it was cool to see that. And so love Derek, love his heart. And Derek has another idea. So of course, we're going to get behind it because he crushed it with the first one. Um, Derek, if you didn't know, is an avid CrossFitter. He's built like a truck. And um, so he, he was challenged by some of his life group guys um, and myself and some other people to kind of do some, uh, some activities or some fitness challenges. And so every Friday, we're going to post a 91278 workout. So you are more than happy to do the workout. If you are not somebody that doesn't want to work out, no big deal. But we're trying to do something to get engaged, kind of like bingo. And so you are more than welcome to participate. We'll post the <clears> workouts like this. Friday, you have the whole week to do it. And what you want to do is you want to send, you'll, after when you're done, you're going to time yourself and you'll send your time in. And we're actually going to have mm-hmm. prizes for people that, uh, that do the best. And so do the workouts and we'll actually give you a, a prize if you finish first. So record your time. And this is a good way for all of us to get active, get fit, get healthy. Um, and honestly, it's a good way to just get out, um, get out of the house. Some of it involves running. So just pray for me. Cause I don't, I don't, I don't run. And so, um, just anything oh, I've we been can running. get active. So instagram way to go tucker i'm proud of you so check the instagram homies uh so uh next next week oh my gosh this is the last next week will be the last week that we do of this series so this has been an awesome series question seeing the uh questions that you guys have been wanting to send in of that you wanted us to really discuss and have conversations over and it's been Super cool to see the fruit that's been coming out of it and to hear some of the conversations that are coming out of your life groups, your small groups. But like we said, next week is the last week we're doing this question series. So if you still want to submit some questions, if you still have this one thing you wanted us to talk about that we never got to or that we haven't got to yet, you got one more week. You can submit it. You can send it in. You can send it in to the inst- to our Instagram. We can post the Google Voice number, which is completely anonymous. Um, but send in those questions because we want to have conversations about what you guys, you as students, 7th, 8th, 9th, 10th, 11th, and 12th students want to have conversations about. Now, Trey is going to be talking about what we're going to do in two weeks. Yeah, so don't forget, seriously, ask questions. That This is what we're here for. We're here to answer any questions mm-hmm. you guys have. You guys determine what we'll talk about next week. So seriously, go do that. But one of the things that we are excited about and Tucker and I have been praying about is, is what do we, what do we do next? Right? Like, uh, Kemp opened up, um, a few or, or governor Kemp, if you're not aware, opened up a few things like nail salons and, and, and different things can start opening this Friday and gyms. And so, um, the world is opening back up and, um, we don't know, 
um, what the next couple months hold and when we can officially get back together and meet in person and all this stuff. And so one of the things that we've been talking about with Tucker is this idea of a new normal. Mm -hmm. Like um, we're not going back, we're going forward. And so two weeks from today, we actually are starting a new series for the entire month of May and it's called the new normal. And so what we're going to do is um, a lot of people keep saying, I can't wait to go back to normal. I can't wait to go back. And they use that word back. But I think as followers of Christ, I think we're actually called to go forward and to form new habits and new disciplines and a new normal. So that way, when we come out of this quarantine, we come out spiritually stronger and closer to Jesus. And so um, I believe um, this next series is going to be awesome. I think it's going to help us establish a new normal and kind of change um, change our lives. And so that when we do, when we are allowed to leave and kind of go out and do things in public and, and meet together, our normal has changed. And so uh, super excited about that series. Again, that's two weeks and then uh, two weeks from today and next week is the last week of our question series. So super excited about that. But Tucker, let's jump into our questions or uh, our second to last week of our question series. You mind praying for us to get us started? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, God, we love you. God, we, uh, we know that your word is ultimate truth, that your word is where all the answers of our questions lies. God, God, Holy Spirit, lead us to truth, lead us to revelation that is found in your word, God. God, I pray just these next few moments that, again, it is you who speaks, God, that Trey and myself, that we remove ourselves, God, and that we just speak your word, God. We speak your message that you have given us, God. God, we love you. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So, Last week, we had a cool conversation about the Bible, and it was cool to not talk about or to talk about the, the Bible itself and not really what's in the Bible, but how we got the Bible. And so this week, we're going to tackle kind of another term or another kind of spiritual thing that is talked about in Christianity a lot. And so tonight, we're going to talk about the Trinity. And so if you've been around Christianity for uh, any, any sort of time, you've heard this phrase, you've heard this word kind of, kind of used, it's called the Trinity. And basically, it stands for um, tri, meaning three, so trinity, so three is the, there's the reference right there, so it stands for the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and it's a reference to uh, the image of God, and so uh, we're going to talk about that, but Tucker, before we do, I have a question for you. I was not prepared for this. Word, here you go, I know, we'll see if you get it. Does the word trinity ever appear in the Bible? Why do you ask me these questions that make it seem like I, if I get them wrong, it's like, why are you a youth pastor, you know? Um, I roast in the comments, so don't get this wrong. Uh, uh, no, I do, no, the Bible never says Trinity. You are correct. See, you are, you are a scholar. Look at you, a baller and a scholar. I'm a theologian. And, uh, Check out my newest book. <laughs> yeah, you can't, you can't even spell theologian, but we are one. And so... Uh, um, but we're talking about this word Trinity, and Trinity, like I said, is actually not in the Bible. It's not. It's not a word that's used. It's a word that the that was kind of formed later in Christianity. Because if you read the Bible, it talks about the Father. It talks about Jesus Christ, or sorry, it talks about God the Father as one entity, and then you have Jesus Christ, who consists of the Son of God. That's why it's God the Father, Jesus Christ, and then you also have the Holy Spirit. And so you have these three beings essentially that are described in scripture and um, the first time we see these is in the baptisms of jesus if you guys were at the 78 series you heard uh, tucker kind of preach on this and so you have the holy spirit jesus and god the father and so uh, just as a fun fact a lot of people don't know this and i thought this was funny uh jesus christ christ is actually not jesus's last name for those of you that don't know uh christ is a word that is used to describe um as, as a savior and so literally it's not, it's not Jesus last name, Christ, like on his driver's license, it wouldn't say Jesus and the Christ. It would be Jesus. And then um, we call him the Christ because we believe Jesus is the savior. And so that's just a fun fact. Hopefully you guys learned something new with that. But so it gets kind of confusing in Christianity because we say we worship one God, right? And we're a God or a religion of one God. We worship, we worship God, right? But how do you justify this whole idea of God? And you, but you have God the Father, you have Jesus the Son, and you have the Holy Spirit, where it seems like they're they're three separate entities, but they're the same God. So, so um, I don't know, Tucker, if you've ever struggled with this, but it gets kind of confusing, right? When we talk about one God, but it's three separate like parts. Like, how does that all work together? And so, people have tried for for centuries to explain. Um, like, how does that work? How can you have one, but three, like that, that's, that seems very, um, what's the word, uh, is an oxymoron? Maybe that's the, maybe that's the right word that doesn't, 
con thank you that's what i was looking for and like those don't they shouldn't go together but um one theologian described it like this and it's not totally accurate it's just kind of a it's just kind of a general um some people refer to it and so basically it's like this if you ever seen water the the chemical element of water if you guys paid attention in science is h2o but it comes it's h2o but it comes in three different forms you have the air and you have the gas and then you have or sorry the gas is the air you have the liquid and then you have solid which is ice and so ice water and air and so all of it is h2o but all of it is in slightly different forms it's all the same thing but in different forms and so um, that is kind of essentially the same exact concept of the Trinity, where we have God the Father, we have Jesus the Son, and then we have the Holy Spirit. And so in our Christian terms, God the Father is, is, is the big God, and Jesus is, is considered the Son, who which in turn is, is, uh, is, is God, but then gave himself up on our behalf and, and died and then rose from the dead as a justification for our sins. And then you have the Holy Spirit now, which is alive inside of us and kind of guides us in our life. And so if you've heard songs like, um, like Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Um, it's part of the Trinity. And so um, just, just cool stuff like that. But um, so hopefully that gives you guys a better understanding of that. And so Tucker, um, I, hopefully I did a decent job in explaining it, but mm -hmm. we you kind of take it from, I have it kind of up here in the big picture of what the Trinity is and really kind of hone in on the Holy Spirit. Cause I feel like yeah. that's where most people have the questions. Like we get the God, the father, we get jesus the son who died on the cross but this whole holy spirit thing is kind of some people are like eh, i don't know about that you know yeah definitely so just to hit on exactly what trey said the holy spirit is god um the holy spirit is a person you see without within scripture jesus refers to the holy spirit as a person as a he using pronouns instead of uh, objectifying uh language so the holy holy spirit is a person and the holy spirit is this intimate relational part of God, this personal relational part of God. Um, and the truth of the matter is, hey, follower of Christ, dude, you have the Holy Spirit. You have the Holy Spirit of God in you. And I want to hit on a couple, um, couple sections of scripture um, because I want to show what the Holy Spirit does. And uh, 78 students, we've had this conversation before, but it's a very good reminder of what the Holy Spirit is doing, because we may get confused sometimes with what the Holy Spirit does in our life. So if you have your Bibles, uh, flip over to John 16, John 16, and I'm going to be reading verses five through nine. So this is at the very, this is near the end of Jesus's, um, Jesus's life. Uh, G Jesus has predicted his death. We see this in the timeline. Jesus is getting ready to tell his disciples what it's going to be like without him being physically present. So Jesus says this to his disciples, but now I'm going away to the one who sent me. So the son is returning back to the father, those two parts of the Holy Trinity. And not one of you is asking where I'm going. Instead, you grieve because of what I've told you. But in fact, and this, this may be a crazy verse for some of us. Maybe this is crazy to hear right now. Jesus says, but in fact, to his disciples, it is best for you that I go away because if I don't come, the Holy Spirit, the advocate, won't come. If I do go away, then I will send him to you. And when he comes, he will convict the word of world of its sin and of God's righteousness and of the sin and of the coming judgment. The world's sin is that it refuses to believe in me. So this there's a strong word right there that gets, I guess, misinterpreted in the church world. And it's this word of conviction. See, conviction is not a bad thing. See, when we hear conviction, we're like, oh, geez, like someone's convicting me. Someone's telling me I'm doing something wrong. But that's the work of the Holy Spirit. See, Jesus says, when the Holy Spirit comes, it will convict the world of its sin. And what this word conviction really means, it means that something negative, something bad and in the context of John 16, 5 through 9, it means the sin of the world, our sin, is being called out. See, and what conviction does, conviction shows the sin in our life and points us back to Jesus. See, and I don't know if you've ever felt this, Trey, but you know, like, you know, you deliberately sin and we feel that guilt and we feel that shame and we feel like that, that negative attitude about us, right? That's conviction, like, Guilt and shame, there are things that show 
there are things in our life that show that your life is being lived for something else, but you have traded that greater purpose for something cheap. And that's the Holy Spirit showing you, dude, you are exchanging, exchanging truth for a lie. So conviction is, it's not a bad thing. In fact, it is the work of God in you to point out the sin in you and to point this point you back to the Savior, back to the source of life. And what I think happens a lot of times is conviction gets confused with this word called condemnation. And condemnation, it is God's judgment, it, God's final judgment on the world after this second coming, after we see this in Scripture, right? See, but Romans 8, 1 says, there, for there is no condemnation for those of us in Christ Jesus. For those of us who are living in this relationship with Jesus, for those of us who have the Holy Spirit, dude, there is no condemnation. You are not being condemned. You have been given the Holy Spirit that will convict you, but instead of condemnation, you have life and you have righteousness. So conviction, it's sort of a correction that corrects our hearts, our minds, and our thoughts. So conviction, that's one. And then I just want to hit on this second point right here. Um, we see this played out in the, um, in the later, in, in actually the first history of the early church. Um, Jesus is gone. The Holy, uh, the disciples are sitting in this room. We call it the upper room. Uh, so Jesus' disciples, after he has ascended back into heaven, come into this room and the Holy Spirit has came on to his disciples. And it's a very beautiful, powerful image of the Holy Spirit. But we see this guy named Peter get up and he actually speaks to people. And this is Acts chapter two, if you want to flip over there. Acts chapter mm-hmm. two, um, this is after the Holy Spirit has filled the disciples, has came into the disciples. Um, and it says this in verse 14, it says, then Peter stepped forward with the 11 other apostles, other, 11 other apostles and shouted to the crowd, Listen carefully, all of you fellow Jews and residents of Jerusalem. Make no mistakes about this. And Peter, after this, just goes off. Like, he goes off. He shares the gospel message. He shares who Jesus is. And he shares all of the the gospel message who Jesus is to these people who don't know who Jesus is, who are hearing the gospel message for the first time. And they receive the gospel. They receive Jesus. They enter into this new relationship, and the church is started this day, right? This is the day of Pentecost. This is what we refer to back um, a lot in church history. And then at the end of it, Peter gets um, Peter filled with the Holy Spirit because just a couple of verses later, earlier, it said, filled with the Holy Spirit, Peter gets up and he speaks in front, in front of everybody. And then at the end of his message, he says this, and this is Acts, Acts chapter 2, verses 36 through 41 it says so let everyone in israel know for certain that god has made this jesus whom you crucified to be both lord and messiah peter's words pierced their hearts and they said to him and to the other apostles brothers what should we do peter replied each of you must repent of your sins and turn to god and be baptized in the name of jesus christ for the forgiveness of your sins then you'll receive the gift of the holy spirit this is the this this promise is to you to your children and to those far away, all who have been called to the Lord our God. Then Peter continued preaching for a long time, strongly urging all of his li- listeners, save yourself, this crooked generation. Those who believed what Peter said were baptized and added to the church that day, about 3,000 in all. Okay, so that's a beautiful story, Tucker. Like, what does that have to do with anything about what the Holy Spirit does? The Holy Spirit leads you to opportunities to share the gospel with people. Um, yep. That it could be at your lunch ta- lunch table at school. It could be around the table at dinner with your family. It can be through Snapchat, through Instagram, through texting somebody, whatever it is. But scripture says Peter was filled with the Holy Spirit and he shared the gospel message. See, the Holy Spirit is God and God, our relationship to God is to glorify God. See, the Holy Spirit is not it wasn't concerned about how many people were listening to Peter. All it was concerned about were, was the message, was the salvation message that Peter was delivering. And the Holy Spirit was working in people's hearts because the Holy Spirit led Peter to share the gospel. See, the Holy Spirit leads us to share the gospel with people. And sometimes, I know in high school and middle school, when I neglected that calling you see that person, you're like, man, maybe I should say something to them. Maybe I should speak up. And you just don't. And you're like, 
man, I felt like I did the wrong thing there. Dude, because the Holy Spirit's not called you to be comfortable. The Holy Spirit has called you to share the gospel with people. It is to tell, I mean, Jesus says at the end of his life, go into all the nations, making disciples of them, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, dude. That's what we're called to do. And the Holy Spirit, this intrapersonal relational part of God is leading us step by step to do that. So the Holy Spirit convicts. Yeah. And the Holy Spirit leads us to share the gospel with people. And I'm not saying this is an exhaustive list because it's not. The Holy Spirit does a lot more. Um, and we can have a much deeper one-on-one -on -one conversation about that. But that's very practically. And dude, like we got to get, we got to let go and let the Holy Spirit take over. But in that moment and in our families and dude, just in our relationship with Jesus too. Yeah, letting him. Uh, letting the spirit kind of guide us and so for me um, I've always been described as like the spirit is just the thing that that internal nudge um, that you feel directing you in scripture and directing you and how you should talk to people and kind of that like you said it, it's it's that conviction but also that it it almost um, coerces you into sharing the gospel essentially and so to, to stick with the c words there but um, yeah. And so um, I know a lot of you may have questions about that. Um, Tucker and I are available and stuff. And I always have to talk about that because we know um, that part of faith can always be confusing, especially when we live in like a this modern culture where some people are like oh, the spirit, like, what is that? Like, mm -hmm. science, you know, like, and so um, it can be a difficult conversation. And I think um, as a society, it's something that um, we, we as believers can easily struggle with because this idea, like I said, we're not super fond of the whole spirit thing and so um if you yeah. have questions feel free to reach out to tucker um but um tucker yeah thank you for that we hope you guys enjoyed that conversation regarding um the holy spirit and just kind of what it means and uh, and how it works and uh just the trinity in itself and hopefully the h2o analogy was helpful mm -hmm. um i once saw somebody post an analogy with uh the spider-mans and you know like the the meme where they're all like where they're all like pointing at each other right it's like it's like when the Holy Spirit, God the Father, and Jesus show up, and they're just like, it's the same Spider-Man thing. Uh, and then somebody sent me a fidget, a fidget spinner, and it's like the three holes where the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, and you spin it, and it's, and it's God. I was like, that's 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 going to get somebody in jail. Um, theology uh, prison. Um, yeah. But we're uh, able to learn something and able to grow. Um, I'm going to go ahead and pray, and then – um we will dismiss into our zoom groups right am i missing anything else tiger no dude you got it wait i is um we have to give a special shout out for those of you that are 78 and 912 regulars you know we have not just a intern i believe fully we have the intern in the the intern. sam beam and yeah, he's the man, myth, legend. Sam does it all. And so Sam has spoken 912. He's spoken 78. He leads a 912 live group. He's phenomenal. And so he's actually behind the scenes right now on the keyboard, uh, making sure that the live is posted on YouTube. And he's in the back. He's interacting in the chat as Sam yeah. Hills. And so uh, as a student, so we want to give a shout out to Sam Beam. So if you're in the chat right now, Holla at Sam Beam. Tell him thank you because without him, I don't know if we'd be able to make these services. Sam, so thank you for everything you're doing. Uh, thanks, Sam. So, Sam, we love you. Tucker, will you pray us out? Or you already prayed. I feel like I should pray. Keep oh, gosh. Me. We saw Sam. We saw Sam and his staff. Look at that Corona staff. <laughs> uh, I Sam. love that, Sam. Oh, Sam, you're awesome, Sam. Sam has a girlfriend. It's nice to be there, people. So. So Sam right. volunteered his way into a job. Let's just make that known. That's a great volunteer. Yeah, if you want to, he got a Oscar and now he gets a paycheck. It ain't a big one, but he gets a paycheck. So. Heck yeah. Cool. Right. Yeah, Sam, actually, Sam, can you, let's, should we make Sam print us out? Bro, you put me on the spot. I got you though. Yeah, Sam. I, I wasn't even, I was still. Yeah. Playing. So I'm praying y'all. We're sure putting him on the spot. Anything else? Is it, is it no nah, man after this jump on your zoom groups if you're in high school facetime or do a zoom group with your leader um we love you and we'll see you guys next week for our last week of uh question yep the 78 so, small group take it away sam in the chat uh all right okay cool uh god thank you so much for this day thank you for the message that tucker and trey brought lord learning more about you and who you are um and the ways that you work in our lives lord help us to 
keep our eyes focused on you throughout all of this, the craziness, the quarantine, and being stuck mm-hmm. out. Lord, as we go back in, as, um, as things return to the new normal, as they said earlier, Lord, let us be cautious and careful um, and continue to pursue you and seek relationships and community. I pray this in your name. Amen. Amen. Bye. Bye. Amen. Bye. Thank you, Slammel. You're the man, Tucker. It was a pleasure. Yeah. So, so uh, 78ers, the Zoom link will hopefully be posted in the chat very soon. Um, and then it will, Sam, I sent it to you in, uh, in Slack. All the leaders should have it, so you can send it to your life group as well. Um, but still, just want to make sure. Oh, my gosh. That w- I'm getting there. Sorry, guys. No, you're good, dude. Um, so you know that one guy who always um, like asked for the meeting ID for the 